just to go back to um, I was going to bring up Brett James because it seems like you've you've signed several writers that ended up going on and having hits. Um, I know one really well because it happened to be me. But <laughs> um, but what did you see in writers before the rest of the world saw it? What what were those qualities? Because we have a lot. I mean, we have people watching tonight from Sweden, from all over, people here in Nashville, Canada, Australia. And they're all, I know every one of because I was wondering this, what do they need to improve on? What What are those qualities you look for that makes you want to sign a writer? Well, let's talk about you for a minute. You know, um, I, I can recall really well that you, man, you you just write from a different point of view. Mm. Um, and clearly you were already a, a well-defined songwriter. You, you knew how to do a basic structure of a song, but you just had this thing that was fresh. Um, again, it was your point of view. So a southern boy different. living in New York City, I yeah. think, yeah. sort of uh, matriculated into this, this little songwriting beast that you were. And are, and um, and that was the thing that that piqued my my uh, interest. Do you still find that today the same types of things interest you in writers and songs as then, or, or has it changed? It has changed. Um, you know, we're living in the, the age of bro country, and uh, you know, so much of what a songwriter does now has to do with um, unfortunately, I think mm. uh, their programming skills. Right. Let's let's be honest. Yeah. And um, even though I don't necessarily care how good the programming sounds, I'm listening to the melody and the lyrics. Um, but so many of the forces that have that are in the mix around me are conditioned to saying, "Wow, look at look how good that kick drums. Listen to how good that kick drum sounds." Right. And, and those those cool samples and and um, and even though I personally don't, that's not a requirement for me. It is now part of the mix. Right. Just look at what's behind us here, and yeah. you know, this this studio um, ten years ago would not have a keyboard sitting in the front of it, right? <laughs> Well, I came from New York as a programmer, so I started out with okay. But the normally, and, you but would you're just, right. Most of the you know, time. it was a, either a little two-track recording device or a, right. uh, and, a, and, a, and a and two guitars in the room. And yeah. and uh, now, the, our typical demo session is this, and and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's just all I'm saying is to me, um, it defines a whole lot of the community now. It doesn't. It, but it doesn't define how I look at it. I still right. look at a, you know, how what a, what the lyric is saying, what it's doing, what the chord structure is, and you know, am I compelled by the song? I mean, I know a lot of publishers that have signed quote track guys, yes. um, guys that program, and but they end up inevitably pairing them with writers that can write lyrics and and can write melodies. Um, in order for them to be successful, right. you know, but both are important. Both are important, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, I tend to, you know, in my in my publishing life, I've tended to be attracted to writers that were stronger lyrically mm -hmm. than the writer that was stronger melodically, uh, because it seems to be those those writers are a little bit more of a rare bird. Yeah.